Greetings, I hope you're doing well and staying safe wherever you are. My name is Imran Vagu and I'm the founder of American Higher Education Consulting here in Nairobi, Kenya. Um, and today we'll be talking about motivating your team from a virtual setting. If you are like me and any other small business that has been drastically affected by this global pandemic, one of the changes that you had to implement is having to work remotely. And so one of the issues that dealing with working remotely is how do you keep your team motivated in this virtual setting. Now, prior to the pandemic, there were many teams that were working remotely and were successful at it. But I do believe there's a difference between working from home and having to work from home because of a global pandemic. So in this particular situation where we're having to work from home, where overnight we had to change how we conduct business, how do you keep your team motivated um, in this virtual setting? And that's what we will be looking at. But before we get started, I want to share a quote from uh, Phil Jackson, who is one of the NBA's greatest coaches. And I think it is very critical to help us create the mindset uh, to absorb the tips that I'm about to share with you. And the quote goes as follows. The strength of the team is each individual member and the strength of each member is the team. Meaning that um, for the team to be successful and the business to be successful, we need to make sure that each individual team member is successful. Um, and for them to be successful, the team overall has to rally behind them and that's how we will create a cohesive team that is motivated to work through this uh, challenging period. So let's start with the first tip. What do I mean by creating a normal or new routine? We as human beings are creatures of habit. Um, every day we wake up, we work out, make breakfast, drive to work, um, sit down, have what the, read the news, all these things that we've planned before um, that we've created into a routine, into a habit. And habit allows us to do things on autopilot. Now, because all of a sudden we're having to work from home, we have to create new routines. Um, not only on how we do our work at home, but also how we conduct ourselves as a team. So for example, uh, prior to this pandemic, you might have had a meeting once or twice a week as a team to discuss the goals. And because you were in front of each other, you were able to discuss um, small, small things every day. But now, because people are working from home, you need to create a new routine. So for example, with my team, I've created a new routine called 10 at 10, where every day we meet um, virtually for 10 minutes. And um, in each meeting, we share something that we're grateful for, something that uh, we had a small win to celebrate, and then our plans for the day. Um, this was not routine for us prior to the pandemic, but because of what's going on and because of this virtual setting, we have now made this a new routine. And so every day I know that I've got at least one, a few of my things planned out and it helps me shape my day. So creating a new normal is very important, not just for you as a team leader, but also for the other individuals. And I think it helps them keep motivated because they have some sort of schedule or structure in this new virtual setting. The other thing that you've really got to do, especially for teams that are visual, um, is to create some sort of virtual whiteboard. Um, at the office, you've got flip charts, you've got whiteboards where you can write the common goals or individual goals for each team and people can at least plan or check the different milestones that they're getting to. Because we're all kind of in our different uh, settings right now, it's hard sometimes to have a common or virtual goal where everybody can see that we're working towards. Um, so I looked into different resources and found that Trello was actually quite helpful. Now, there might be different resources for the different kind of teams. So if you're a product uh, development team, you might need a different resource. If you're a sales team, you might need a different resource. But the important thing is to have some sort of virtual whiteboard where you can collectively put your goals um, down and see how you're tracking towards those goals. The next tip that I'd like to share with you is set clear goals. Now, it goes without saying that even when you're working face to face, you need to set clear goals. But I think in this current uh, situation of a virtual setting, it is even more important. Uh, let me give you an example. 
So let's say in a face-to-face -face setting in your office, you tell your team member, hey, I need you to do this task. Um, and because they're sitting next to you, you're able to just every once in a while check in, look up from your desk as you're typing, how's this coming along? They can show you the progress and make sure that you are, uh, that they're on the right track and you're happy with what we're doing. Now, in a virtual setting, you can't be on the phone all the time saying, okay, now what are you doing? Okay, now what are you doing? So when you're giving a team member a task, make sure that you're giving them a very clear objective, the goals are very clear, ask them to re repeat or ask them to paraphrase what you've asked them to do so that we make sure when they actually start doing the, the objective that they're on the right track. And it doesn't hurt, I mean, just to check in with them a little bit through the process and it doesn't have to be where you're breathing down their neck, okay, what's going on? Um, you can ask them, in, in a manner that doesn't make them feel like they're being micromanaged, um, but you're able to make sure that the task is being um, executed in the way that you needed to do. So clear goals are very critical in uh, this virtual setting. The other tip that I think is also very important is to be empathetic. Now, working from home is not taking your office setting and just finding a corner in your house to do that. Um, everybody has different, different uh, scenarios that they're dealing with. You're dealing with parents of children, um, you're dealing with uh, children that are t caretakers for their parents, um, you're dealing with individuals that are living alone, that thrive in being, being around people. So you've got to be empathetic with your team members. They're not always going to be um, a hundred percent engaged or a hundred percent focused on what's going on work related because they're not in their normal environment so when you're dealing with team members in this virtual setting i think it is very important to be empathetic with the situation that they're dealing with um, and so that it helps you manage your expectations better and it helps you relate with them i think um, in, a, in, a, in a stronger way so that they also know that you, you, you understand what they're going through while working from home. Um, I think trust is a very, very critical component of a virtual setting. Um, in a normal face-to-face -face conversation, individuals get a sense of your character. Um, they get to see how you interact with other people, they get to see how you treat other people, and it helps build a certain level of trust. But when you are apart and in a virtual setting, um, and they're not able to interact with you on a regular basis, it's, the trust can become a little shaky. And what do I mean by trust? Now, let's use this example of the global pandemic. Um, team members need to be able to trust that you will be honest with them on how the business is doing. Nobody wants to wake up in the morning to an email from the boss saying, guys, because of this pandemic, we haven't met our sales goal, um, we're gonna get salary cuts, or even worse, I'm having to let you go, or even worse, this business is shutting down. So the team members need to be able to trust that you will keep them informed. Um, you will also try and keep their best interest at heart. I know as a business owner, you want to do what's best for your business, but you also have to remember your business is as strong as your individual team members. So if they're not feeling comfortable, if they're feeling that you could at any given chance um, betray them, then they're not going to be fully engaged as well and they're not going to be fully motivated. They're literally sitting there waiting for that shoe to drop and be like, okay, when, when are things going to turn drastically bad, you know, and start looking for other jobs. So it is very important to build trust amongst your team member. And sometimes this is done by having one-on-one -on -one conversations. This is by having honest conversations with them and giving them a sense of how the business is doing as well. Um, the next topic that I really think is important in this particular and builds up on the other tips that I've shared is manage output and not hours. Now, typically as a small business, you're used to having set hours, you know work from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., you take one hour lunch break and I expect everyone to be here. But the reality of the matter is that even when we have set office hours, not everybody is able to give you the full eight hours of the workday. So moving that into a virtual setting, that becomes even more difficult because remember I said you've got to be empathetic to the fact that 
not everyone has the ability to set up an office at home. I mean, they're sharing internet, they're dealing with power cuts, they're having to take care of family members, they're having to make sure that their children um, are their children are at home and need to do learning, or that they need the first couple of hours of the day to do some exercise, be it yoga, go out for a run, or whatever it might be, to psych them up, psych themselves up from working from home. So if you focus too much on our hours clocked, you're going to be disappointed and you're going to create frustration for yourself. So rather, what I want you to start thinking about is focusing on output. Now, when you've set clear objectives and goals, as uh, mentioned in one of the tips, um, and your team member knows what is expected of them, measure that output. Now, if the output is not being delivered, then you can have an honest and candid conversation and ask them what's going on um, and see if there's any way you can help them. But just because someone isn't clocking in eight hours a day within a specific time frame, that doesn't mean that they're not being productive. All right. Um, the other thing that I think is also very important is to leverage technology to stay connected. Now, yes, we've got emails. Yes, we've got phones. Um, you can probably use a group uh, texting product like WhatsApp and you're set up a group and you're chatting with each other. The, the key thing to remember is that it is not all about work when I mean stay connected. Think about your office setting. When you're in the office, do you only talk about work? No, um, you might talk about the football game that happened yesterday, or you might talk about a movie that's come out, or you might share recipes, or if a team member has achieved something, you might give them a hand, clap for them, and sing for them if it's their birthday, all these things. Now, because of the virtual setting, you're not having that face-to-face -face interaction, you need to make sure you stay connected with your teams. So even on my WhatsApp group that I have with my team, we don't just talk about work. Um, we share photos of food that we've cooked. We share photos of silly things our cats are doing, or we share jokes, we share pictures or memes, or whatever it might be, to help somewhat recreate that connection. And I think it's so important in that team motivation for team members to know that they're not just dealing with, um, with robots, that they're dealing with human beings that have emotion and just like them. And sometimes it's like posting on the group, hey guys, I'm really struggling today. Like uh, my motivation level is low, um, I'm just really struggling. And that allows team members to at least jump in and support each other. And I've had that. I've had that where I've told my team on a call or in a meeting that, hey, just really struggling today. Like I, I'm not able to be focused. Um, and then my team is able to rally behind me and uh, support me. So when I say stay connected and leverage technology, it's not just about work. Um, you could actually get on a Zoom call where you're sharing lunch and just talking to each other over lunch or watching a movie or watching a TV show. Again, the idea behind is to make sure that your team feels connected with each other um, and that helps them motivate to know that others are also going through the same challenges that they are. Um, the, the next thing that I think is really cool that one of the silver linings of being at home all the time is it gives us a little bit more time to, exp to explore our creativity. And what do I mean by this? Um, when you're in a normal office setting, you've got your office hours, you've got clients coming in, you've got all these different things that you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis that sometimes you get bogged down with the routine and the minutia and you don't have time to explore creatively. Now, one of the unfortunate uh, one of the unfortunate uh, um, one of the unfortunate situations that has come up with having to work from home is that some of this work traffic has reduced. You know, like our team is not able to go out and do um, uh, sales calls, is not able to do uh, business development. So, how do you compensate for that time that is normally used? Um, on business development or is out in meetings and things like that. Now, I'm not saying that you have to do a time for time compensation, but what I think is important is tell team members that here's an opportunity for you to be creative. Like how can we change some of the ways we do our normal processes? Or is there something that we can do with content creation? Or is there a different way that we can market? And it's kind of cool to see the different ideas my team members are coming up with on how their creative ideas align with the business goals that we have. 
So I do think you can take advantage of this remote setting and inspire creativity um, within your team members. And I think when teams are allowed to be creative, they can find motivation in the work they're doing because they can find things to align with their personal passion and something that aligns with your business as well. Um, the second to last thing that I want to talk about is create a little bit of friendly competition. Um, competition is helpful and I'm not talking about work competition. You don't want to affect the quality of the work that is given out, um, but friendly competition amongst yourselves. And this could be doing Scrabble online or like a push-up challenge or it could be puzzles. And I think that just helps create a little bit of fun in this environment that we're in. Uh, so the other day, my team and I had a cook-off challenge. Now, obviously, we're not around to be able to taste each other's food, but we, but we judged each other on presentation. We judged each other on how the food looked and if there were family members to taste it and give feedback on it. And it was just really fun because we all came up with what we were going to cook. We all recorded what we were doing and then we made like short videos about the work. Um, and you know, so again, find different ways that you can have friendly competitions in a virtual setting to keep each other engaged. And I think that is also a critical aspect of uh, being motivated. So what you might have like friendly competitions at work, you are now just moving into a virtual setting. And then I think the most important aspect is seek feedback. This is the final tip that I'm going to give you because it really ties in everything. Remember, um, you're not going to be able to achieve all of these 10 tips in one go. And not all of these tips are going to be applicable to your team. So as you're going through this virtual setting um, uh, process of motivating your team, you need to make sure that you're seeking feedback and see what's working for them and what's not working for them so that you can reiterate each time and find new solutions. If you say, okay, I saw this video here, the 10 tips, this is all we're going to do. It's not going to be successful because what works for me might not work for your team. What works for your team might not work for another team. So it is important to seek feedback, um, do one-on-one -on -one meetings, um, even in your meetings, ask them what's working, what's not working. How can we tweak this process to ensure that they remain motivated uh, during this time of virtual setting. So I hope you find these 10 tips uh, useful. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me with the context provided. And I hope you can manage to keep your team motivated. And believe me, there is no one cure for everyone. And it is not, you're not going to have 100% motivation all the time. This is a new environment for everyone. Um, and you've just got to remember that you've got to keep building at it slowly. And together, you can keep your team motivated and continue working um, in a productive manner. So take care and have a great day. Thank you very much.